everyone, it's Teresa. I have a fun bunch of thrift flips for you today. And it's part of a challenge that I'm gonna tell you about in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so this one is definitely by far my favorite DIY. I'm gonna start off with this little cookie jar kind of crock situation. I have already sprayed it down with a coat of just matte spray paint, matte clear spray paint. And I'm gonna go in with this DIY paint in the color Apothecary. I get this from my friend Brie over at Upcycled by Brie. I'll have her website listed below in case you are curious, wanna check them out. Um, they're clay based. They're a little different than like a chalk paint. Uh, they do, um, they are on the pricier side, uh, but I'm actually starting to sell some of my things. So I'm trying to like upscale my paint and stuff. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna use this color on this project. I've got a few different colors I'm gonna use throughout this uh, whole video, uh, mostly in the DIY paints. I'm taking a really flat brush and just kind of giving it a really good coat. This stuff dries pretty quickly in my opinion. So I'm trying to work fast. Obviously it's sped up, so it's not, I'm not working that fast, but I did break out my little turntable so that I can kind of move through this pretty quickly. I didn't want to take a super light color because I didn't want those, um, like flowers and fonts and everything to, to, you know, show through. I have a couple spots that are a little clumpier as I was kind of working my way around the crock. So I'm going to take a sanding block and just smooth it out just a little bit. And if I end up with any spots that go too far through and you can start to see like there, you can start to see the uh, crock underneath. I am just going to brush that over real quick with a little bit of the paint. I'll spritz a little water on it. It is, um, you know, you can kind of like revive it with some water. So I'll spritz a little water on it just to keep it going, uh, keep it from drying too bad. And I did paint the inside of the crock too. That way, as I am attempting to sell it, it looks like a finished project. It doesn't look like it's halfway finished. Um, if, if I were keeping it for myself, I probably wouldn't have gone all the way down. But since I'm planning on selling it, I want it to go all the way down. All right, so next I'm gonna take some IOD ink and an IOD stamp. This is like a little uh, barnyard animal situation. It's a little sheep, lamb, sheep. It's a sheep, right? Uh, I've already done the, what do they call it? A seasoning or, or whatever it is with the sandpaper on the stamp. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you have like IOD stamps, go check out the IOD website. I'll list it below too. Uh, that way you can make sure that you're prepping your stamps the right way. You only have to do it once. So now I have no backer on the stamp and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right down and hold it firm as best I can, smooth down all of the little spots on the stamp. It's a little tricky, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little tricky. I was super nervous and I was like, okay, you get a one shot at this or you have to completely repaint it. <laughs> it doesn't just come off easy. It didn't turn out perfect, but I'm, I'm happy enough with it. It definitely has that vintage look to it. Um, I actually ran a picture of it by my friend Jamie from Simple Roots, Simple Living. I ran a picture by her so she could give me the like friend okay. <laughs> and she did. So that's why I went with it. I'm now taking some of the clear wax, again from DIY, and I'm just gonna give that a pretty quick little like go over on it. One, I didn't want my paint to rub off, and two, I am gonna go over this with some dark wax, and this is gonna give you a lot more control over it. I didn't wanna like completely saturate it with the dark wax because I still wanna see my sheep underneath it. So I don't want to worry about doing it too much. And I'll show you a little tip here that I got from Brie about um, using waxes. So like I said, I do the full once over, I'm going to open up my dark wax, I bought the large container of it, and I will probably have that thing for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> it does not take much. I'm going to just take a chip brush and I'm just going to start slowly going over it and building up in certain spots. I don't want to build it up too much over the sheep, obviously, because then you will not see it. Um, and see right there in that little spot, I got too much. So what I'm going to do is I took a little bit of clear wax on the rag and it's like a little eraser and I, I did it again. Um, that wasn't really for display purposes for demonstration. It was an accident. Um, but it's easy enough to fix, especially if you put down that clear wax first. I guess it basically gives you a little bit of a barrier almost. 
And that's pretty much it for this first DIY. Like I said, definitely my favorite one. And I did forget to mention this. I did get this uh, out in one of my local Goodwills in Orlando, Florida, and it was originally priced at $9, but it was half off. And I thought that that was such a great deal. <laughs> it was like the deal of the day for me. And I have been holding on to it, ready and wanting to do a croc. All right, so on our next one, I'm just gonna do a really simple one with this rolling pin. Uh, another Goodwill find for, I believe, $5. Um, it's more than I'd like to spend, but you know, what are you gonna do, right? Um, so I have some milk paint in the color Lantern. I am going to do basically like equal parts of the paint powder and, the, um, and water. And on this, I noticed the easiest way, at least to me, to mix it up is to actually use kind of like a little spatula. Sorry, I had something in the water and I was like, oh, well, I don't want that in the paint. Um, and this milk paint, because it's milk paint, it is actually a food safe paint too. So just an FYI, um, I don't intend to use this on food, but, you know, or at least the rolling pin, I mean, the rolling pin, I don't intend to use it on food. Uh, but what I do end up doing to find the easiest way to mix it up, I started off with like a little stick and then I was like, you know what, this little spatula ended up working way better. See, there it is, a little spatula. Uh, I already taped down my rolling pin and then I am just going to go over it really quick. Like I said, super easy. I picked the black because I'm trying to kind of go with like a certain color scheme. I already had something painted in the black, which you'll see probably next week. Um, but I ended up thinking like, you know what? It would have really been really pretty to do that apothecary, but I plan on putting it in the rolling pin in the apothe in the, the pot, in the crock. So I didn't think that, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put on my heat gun and I am intentionally have it on a pretty high temperature and I am looking to kind of give a little bit of a, a cracking crackling over basically overdoing the heat on purpose because it's going to make it super super easy to chip away some of this paint I wanted to give it a really cool like chipped handle look basically pretending like it's older than it is and that's okay that's what we all do, right? We, we age things and that is what I'm going to do. So I got my sanding block and I am just going to take it. It's going to be so simple and easy to do because of that heat and because it's the milk paint and it's just, it's just the way it is, right? It's just makes it so much easier to do. And it's going to give it a really nice, authentic looking aged look. Uh, originally I thought I was going to also do like a darker wax on the rolling pin and I started working on it and I didn't like it so I wiped it off. So once I've gotten a good chipping on both of those handles this project will be all finished. And here it is in the crock because it's adorable. I can't help it. I love it. I hope you guys loved this really simple and easy project. You're going to be looking at all your rolling pins now thinking like, can I do that? Can I get away with doing that to my rolling pin collection? And I say yes. Yes, you can. So like I mentioned before, this video is kind of a part of a really fun open playlist that is the Thrift Flip Road Trip, which is hosted by Trish and Kay over at the Crafting Cousins and Brandy is their special host from Making It My Own DIYs. And both of those channels will be listed below for you to check out along with the playlist. And I am Teresa, obviously, and I am joining this little road trip all the way from Orlando, Florida. And I hope you guys will stick around if you like this kind of decor, if you like this kind of DIYs. I really have gotten into kind of making a little bit... Um, more sellable items, I guess I should say. So um, I do these kind of projects as well as some really beautiful ocean resin projects. If those are the kind of things that you want to see, please hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and let's go ahead and get back into our projects. All right, so I have a glass jar. This one is actually from a time when I was making apple cider donuts and it is kind of like a really cute glass jar for apple cider. Um, I actually got it online, like as an online food delivery thing. Um, 
that sounded wrong. Like it's basically they deliver your groceries for you. And I didn't know it was going to come in such a cute container, but man, am I glad it did. And as soon as I got it, I was like, Oh, well now I'm not going to be able to throw this away. This was last fall. So I'm taking some DIY paint in the color faded burlap and I'm giving it a really good coat. I kind of wanted to test it out and see how it does on glass. And it seems like it did pretty well. I haven't had any problems with the, like feeling like it's going to chip off or anything. And so I gave it uh, probably a one really good coat. And now I'm going in with some of the dark wax again. And I originally I was like, well, should I do the clear wax? Should I just do the black wax? So I decided I am going to do some of the clear wax. And that's again, just to kind of give me that little bit more of control. I probably could have skipped it. Um, but I figured, you know what, I have the clear wax. I want to give it a try, give it a go. I probably should have bought the big thing of the clear wax because I feel like I'm going to use that probably every single time. Um, but you know, it's whatever. I'll buy, I'll buy some more later, right? So again, just a really quick coating of the clear wax. And then I'm going to go in, oh, what, just kidding, with a little bit more clear wax. Uh, you see me anytime I'm using these products, I'm actually scooping it out and putting it onto a bowl or in a, on a plate or something like that, just because they're natural and you're not really supposed to um, like cross contaminate it or get any like potential bacteria in it and it'll grow things. Nobody wants to have stuff growing in your paint or anything like that. All right. So anyways, sorry, I get distracted easily, obviously. Um, now I'm going to go in with the dark wax and I'm really looking to bring out a lot of this more like detail that you've seen here. Like you could see the leaves here at the top and there's actually a bunch of writing on the bottom. That's so, so adorable. It says something like an apple a day kind of thing, like a hundred percent. I mean, it's like 100% juice, but that's not shocking that that would be on there. But it says something really cute on there about like something about having an apple a day or drink your apples or I don't know. It's it's really, really cute. I'll try to get a close up here at the end when I show you the finished project, which we're coming to here in just a minute. But I thought that it was too, too cute not to make into like a painted um bottle to hold things, right? Who doesn't need a bottle to hold things? <laughs> but here it is. Like I said, it turned out super cute. I hope you like it too. Leave me a little apple emoji down below if apples are one of your fall favorite things. All right, on to, I believe, our last one for this video. Uh, by the way, there is going to be a part two. Uh, do not forget, I will have a part two to this video. It's going to be a little bit of a different spin. Uh, I'll explain here in a minute. Uh, but I'm going to do some more amber glass. I did it uh, a few videos ago, but I loved it so much. I needed to make some more. So what I'm doing here, I've got some Mod Podge. Uh, it's the satin Mod Podge, and I'm adding in my food coloring. I do four parts yellow two parts red, one part green. And I doubled it or tripled it by the time it was all said and done. Um, but that's kind of the ratio that I kept. And that gives me a little bit more of my base color. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, it gives me a bit more of like my base color. And then depending on my mood, <laughs> what I feel like doing, if I want to go more in the red direction, more in the yellow direction. So see here I am actually adding, the, again, the same ratio though, four, two, one. You could see it much more clearly here because I ended up doing that three times that on this volume of Mod Podge. That's kind of what you have to take into consideration, right? And then I was like, you know what? I want it to pull a little bit more of like a reddish color, reddish yellow color. So that is what I am going to end up putting in more of those. <clears throat> so you kind of have to play with it and kind of figure out what it is that you want it to pull. I'm going to end up grabbing a piece of just random glass. It actually has some like watered down acrylic paint in it because I made a stain. And that's going to let me see kind of what color it's going. And that's when I was like, you know what, that's kind of my base. Now I'm going to do a little more red and a little more yellow. So I think I did two red, one yellow. Again, that was because I wanted it to, to pull more in that direction. So if you wanted it to keep with that base color, then you can do that. Um, I think it ends up pulling out really, really nice coloring to it. So... So in trying a couple of different ways of doing this um, amber glass, this is my favorite. Uh, I'm going to take my, my um, 
I don't know what to call it. It basically looks like sludge. And I'm going to put it inside of the container. So in this instance, it is a bottle. I have a few different pieces that, that I'm going to be doing this to. This bottle has been in my collection for I don't know how long. Uh, the large one that you see to the right side um, is actually a piece that I have done something else to in the past. And... I didn't like it, so I tore it all off, and I'm going to make it an amber glass. And you'll see in a few minutes here, in a second, all of the wonderful things. Don't worry, I do take the tag off the bottom of the bottle, and here they all are. <laughs> Super fast transition here. Um, I, I love them. I think they are so perfect for fall. I think that they are just super classy. And so much of what I made today, I feel like it like has a, has a fall vibe, but you can definitely leave it out all year long. If these are your colors, they might become mine because I kind of love them. And I hope you love them too. And I do want to let you guys know that Next week, I think I'm going to go for Wednesday, is going to have like a part two from this video. Instead of them being traditional thrift flips, they are actually going to be clearance thrifts. Thrifts. That doesn't sound right together. That's hard to say. Clearance thrift flips. We're going to try that again. Clearance flips. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and I hope that you're going to love them because I think they turn out really good. Here's some kind of like little sneak peeks of them. And um, I hope you guys are going to enjoy them. And I hope to see you again next time very, very soon. And have a wonderful day. And I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.